Hello wise owls, happy new solar lunar year, happy new astrological year, happy new natural year. It's Monday, March 27th, 2017, and in this recording I'm going to take a look at the overview for this new cycle. For It's basically it's not only this new month, this new lunar month, but we know that the new moon in Aries imprints the energetic that will play, resonate out, ripple out throughout the year. So for the next year, these are the energetics that will be unfolding and each month new moons will occur and new layering will um, happen over top of these. And so you can see when we layer in and lay down new tracks every new lunar month, every new moon, we have a grand symphony. This year, the symphony is called Second Renaissance Enters. The new moon in Aries this year, 2017, is at 8 Aries. The Sabian symbol of a woman's hat with streamers is blown by the east wind. Well, let me just say, before I even um, go any further and begin, my mind has already been blown and in a wonderful way, and I want to thank all of you who sent me beautiful lovely notes and sent me your songs and played your songs for my music of the spheres remedy and I, I i really i couldn't even begin to just to discuss that at this point um the really lovely thing about it is that it's um it's infinite and it is beyond time and so i can take little doses of that anytime I need it. So thank you. And I can definitely tell a difference since it happened. So I'm greatly humbled and, and so, so appreciative. I uh, am very excited to talk about this, this new moon, this new year, because so many changes are going to happen this year. So many exciting changes. And I've planned some exciting changes for Orc Report as well. That later. So let's begin. A woman's hat with streamers is blown by the east wind. Second Renaissance enters. This year is all about the new, the reformed, the different. New, reformed, and different. All new things are favored. Anything that reforms existing structures, new streams of consciousness, that means ideas, systems, projects, we will be cultivating new streams of consciousness as in new streams of the mind, mindsets. And we want to do this early. We want to start this early on in the process here because this energetic is in effect all year and it's a an east wind blown, blowing. We, we get the impression from the symbol, from the imagery that it's strong and it's from the east and the east is the, the direction of the new, as we know, when we follow the native path, the natural path. East is the beginning on the medicine wheel. There's a hat involved here, right? Hats are protection. Hats can contain so much of what's going to be streaming through our minds. We're going to be streaming ourselves out into the world in a much different way than, than it's been, an expanded way of what's been developing over the last few years of all kinds of things streaming in real time. Goodness. Um, adjustment and acclimation will be necessary early. So knowing that the year is going to be um, gale force winds, shall we say, we move into that from last year's magic carpet of oriental imagery. So last year was a magic carpet ride. Magic, um, phantasmagorical, nightmarish at times, supremely gorgeous at other times. Now it's different. So that magic carpet ride, I've said the genie was out of the bottle when, when that year started. Well, I think we put the genie and the gin back in the bottle. And I'll have a lot more to say about that. So last year's magic carpet ride was designed energetically because the Sabian symbols 
and the sun grow us, the sun and the earth grow us, and the way they do it is, is through a code. There's a spiritual metaphysical law in place. It's be, metaphysics is really the appropriate term. These 360 degrees of the zodiac are the, the, the matrix, the code of how life evolves. It can be used nefariously, but it always rises to its, its intended design of evolution and growth. So let's keep that in mind, okay? So last year, the magic carpet ride, transcending difficulties, taking us above. Hmm, what's your assessment of that? Would you say that happened from your perspective? This year, it's about changing that. It's about reforming what now we've had the experience of, of the things we've seen and where we want things to go because this was very much about driving our heart's desire and our engaging our will. Now we will stream, stream, reform, entering into the new and further into, farther into fifth dimensional consciousness and all things different. It's a balance that, that happens with this and it's most certainly a cleansing because anytime strong winds come through, the energetic is cleared and purged. Matangi, the Mahavidya, the wisdom goddess, Matangi of the wind. Matangi will be strong. This year, no surprise that uh, that was easy to see. What was, not, what was surprising to me is how much Shadashi is going to be leading this year. Chinamasta, the wisdom goddess Chinamasta, will be in, taking lead this month, this lunar month, she who expands the mind, she blows the mind. Some images have her just cutting heads off. <laughs> of course, goes that way patriarchally, doesn't it? But Shadashi informed me yesterday in, in <laughs> unmistakable terms that she will be taking the lead this year. Shadashi takes down the demiurge. That's her job. All right. While uh, the new moon at a woman's hat with streamers is bl blown by the east wind occurs and it enters at 10.58 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 2.58 a.m. Universal Time, Venus will be in close conjunction. The new moon is at 8 Aries. Venus retrograde is at 4 Aries. That Sabian symbol is two lovers strolling through a secluded walk. So anytime a planet is, is in close proximity to the new moon, where the, the sun and the moon meet up in Aries every year, that, that planet will have a significant impact on the year ahead. We've had this in place for the last few years with Uranus uh, in conjunction with the new moons. And Uranus, planet of change, has been driving the five-year transition from the old system and the falling control paradigm of the New World Order and the Archons toward a balanced alignment with life in accordance with free will and the intention of, of humanity's creators and creator. So we know that Venus rules relationships and it being retrograde right now at the new moon tells us that it will be retrograde retrograde-ish this year in a lot of ways. Venus will. It will be working very deeply with relationships. Remember that this Venus retrograde began at the Sabian symbol of a serpent coiling near a man and a woman. And so we always see relationship changes and issues and sometimes new relationships enter during Venus retrogrades. Those often um, don't last much beyond the Venus retrograde. When you meet someone during Venus retrograde, that it's usually a temporary kind of thing because re retrogrades rework. It's a temporary backward motion, a, a pulling back on a slingshot to revise and realign. With Venus, it does this particularly with relationships, but more so in a bigger picture with our values our values ass assessment. What is the most important to us? This is in effect strongly until April 18th, April 15th, excuse me. Oh, there's April 15th, April 18th. Um, 
it'll go direct. And so that energetic of Venus retrograde doing all that heavy, intense work on relationships. And it was 15 Aries. So if you have Aries point energy in your chart or cardinal sign squares there at um, 15 to 20 ish, you've probably experienced a, a, quite a reformation within your relationships, all sorts of relationships. So that will be in place all year. The Sabian symbol, again, two lovers strolling through a secluded walk. Reformation of relationships. Also, the self, relationship with the self coming more into the equation, especially because this is retrograde, it bounces back, right? So we're put out love-wise from our heart, bounces back. Secrets and, and love triangles, love affairs, things like that, those would be more inclined to come to light uh, this year. Just a little side thing. The Earth at the new moon is located always at the exa exact opposite degree in astrology, heliocentric, geocentric, excuse me, a blazing fireplace in a deserted home. This symbol is always heartwarming to me. People born on this day that I know have such generous hearts. The issue is home, um, and the polarity of that on the negative polarity, the catalyst for change, if you will, is loneliness and separation. And so to some degree, this energetic is about leaving things behind, but it's also about what sustains us, what makes us feel secure and not alone, which ultimately is a spiritual issue, which leads me into a significant, a very powerful astrological aspect in place at exact minute about, an exact arc minute in astrology, Jupiter and Pluto making a square, like, like up to the exact. And so this is changes, big changes, big transformations. Jupiter is expansion. The square means the change. Pluto means transformation. Ju Jupiter is at a Jewish rabbi performing his duties. And Pluto is located at a hidden choir singing during a religious ceremony. This is spiritual support. It's sustained on spiritual support of the unseen. Background messages um, are always very important with the hidden choir. Energy, uh, Sabian symbol and always involves others, projects that involve others, even if it involves new projects with other people, um, is supported again with the new and the reformed and the, and the different second renaissance. The other spiritual piece of this directly um, within the, the Sabian symbol comes uh, with Yes, the North Node. The North Node located at a the North Node indicates destiny and the future. A large white cross dominating the landscape stands alone on top of a high hill. So those are three pretty strong, d direct spiritual symbols and imagery that are profound. Standing up comes with the north node at the large white cross. When we look at the south node, which is always opposite the north node, it represents the past and past lives, karmic situations, or I just really, really don't like using the term karma anymore. But let's just call it a multidimensional <laughs> lifetime because it's really all the present now. <laughs> Um, it's about coming out. Squirrel hiding from hunters is the Sabian symbol. This That Sabian symbol always tells us that if we sequester or isolate or, or um, hide out too much from what we are afraid of, we, we lose opportunities. We miss opportunities. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's go over to Mercury. Mercury is in conjunction, is in close conjunction with Uranus, not to the exact degree, but tight f at the new moon. And that means that an element of a Mercury-Uranus conjunction will be in effect all year. Mercury's communications, 
Uranus's changes, usually, usually shocking ones, out of the blue. So shocking things are going to come to light for us to mentally process, to be able to cognitively process. Also, with the saving symbol of Mercury at the new moon is a man possessed of more gifts than he can hold. So this is talents and the reemergence of talents. And it's also about, again, what can be sustained. And it implies um, a great amount, right? More gifts than he can hold, which is kind of similar to the woman's hat with streamers blown. Blowing blow your hat, blowing your lid, it could, it could get overwhelming. Uranus puts everything the way it needs to be. And so it's going to bring out what needs to be brought out. We want to recognize our abundance and our blessings. We always want to do that. But if we are able to keep this in mind every day throughout the year, that we are possessed of more gifts than we can hold, our attitude may shift. We may adjust and acclimate to the strong winds of the year more effectively. Chiron, which has been so very active, is located at the new moon, reveals that it's time to go ahead, for people to go ahead with their different projects. This is about changing and diversifying and doing things differently, which again echoes the, the new, the reformed, and the different of the, the, the primary theme for the year based on the, the new moon and Aries. With this, we have Neptune at a sword used in many battles in a museum. This is again telling us to leave something behind, put it down, and take up something else. Take it up a different way. It means to engage the will. And I do believe that this energetic of Neptune which is, Neptune is in Pisces, its home sign, will be, it will be quite powerful to counter attempts at world war, attempts at civil war. Okay, the, the Neptune rules the highest levels of spirituality in our connection with spirit. And as this blows in, more and more each month, each moon phase each month, it will build towards recognizing that war is never the answer and certainly violence against our fellow humans goes against our nature. We must remember the true rival or the true opponent enemy of humanity is the falling shadow side of Sophia, the Archons. They are being returned to Sophia as they fall, returning to her to reintegrate her shadow. This is what, this is what's happening. This is the way to look at it. The sword used in many battles in a museum. Okay, put it in the museum. What is it in your life that has been the pattern that you want to let go of? The black moon will assist. The black moon is discharging ha, so beautifully at the new moon, located at an old owl up in a tree. We love it. Wisdom and truth are unshadowed. It's the rebirth of wisdom. If you think we've seen the awakening in mass, watch this year. People are going to be able to digest, process, well, it's going to take time, and that's what the owl does, as I mentioned last week. The owl takes it all in and then takes action, but it is usually wise action. So this, the black moon, which is the energetic of rebirth, it, it is the death and rebirth um, system of growth, stream of growth within creation. And so, wow. Yeah, second renaissance enters, wisdom and will return. You watch, that's what's going to happen this year. Saturn. 
is located continu continues to discharge an old bridge over a beautiful stream in heavy use. Again, sustainability, what is useful and utilitarian, bridging the past and the traditions and the, and the structures of integrity and of the past and bringing them forward, the new, the reformed, and the different. Okay, I think I've, that covers all of the Sabian symbols there. Um, I, want, I want to do something a little differently now. I'd like to talk a little bit about the Arabic parts. In astrology, there are, uh, I, don't, I do not recall the exact number of specific degrees that have been identified over the, by the ancients as, um, as having a special like little rulership of, of their own. And so since it is the new moon in Aries, the new year, the new solar lunar year, let's look at if there are any planets, and there are, located in aspect with the Arabic parts. Um, Saturn is conjunct at the new moon, the part, the Arabic part, part of passion. So our heart's desires and passions, there may be attempts to restrict that. Saturn restricts. It tries to limit. So there may be some, well, how long hasn't there been any restriction of our heart's desires and passions? Okay, so we know that this was, um, will be present with Saturn and the Archons, which um, headquartered at Saturn, to try to buzz kill us, to try and damage our joy. Let's not let it happen. The black moon is opposite the part of increase. This tells us that uh, losses would um, lead to something new, so not total losses. You'd think black moon at opposing the part of increase would um, shadow the increase, but remember the black moon isn't just shadow, it's rebirthed also. And so yes, there's usually a death and then there's a rebirth, so usually there's some type of a negative or a um, it's, it's not necessarily negative, it's a um, revelation, which is, truth is always positive, light is always what we want, yes? So, don't, you know, early losses may not, may, may be big gains by the end of the year. The north node of destiny is opposite the part of the father. So, new standards is the way I see that. And understanding uh, the relationship of the archetypal father and how that is played into the situation that we are we find ourselves in space time right now. The North Node is also opposite the part of inheritances. So I believe this is related to our destiny to re-inherit our free will. What's our inheritance? That's our genetic inheritance, our, the code of life for us. The, the inheritance of humanity. The black moon will also aspect the part of sons. This could mean um, attempts to divide and conquer the sacred masculine or brothers. Um, also a, a unification the unity, um, unite and win with the masculine, the sacred masculine rising, and it's been happening every year more and more since 2015, in earnest since 2015. Sacred, them, sacred masculine's always been around, Thalate has always been here. Uh, the new moon is conjunct the part of sickness. This could mean health epidemics this year. It also could mean new health solutions because remember the new moon is the, is all about the new, the, the woman's hat with new streams of consciousness, new things entering the mind and into the collective mind. So um, we'll see about that. We'll keep that on watch. Neptune will be conjunct the part of land journeys. I believe that tells us to follow our dreams. Neptune takes us into that dreamland, land journey. Reformation of ideas is, is so uh, critically in place with that Mercury-Uranus conjunction at the time of the new moon. All of these symbols, you know, all of, all of the, all of astrology operates on a duality and with a positive and neg negative interpretation. 
we take here at Oracle Report, what do we do? We take the, the lower octave and we aim for the highest octave and therefore we transcend or override the matrix. It's the goal here. Also, maybe for a little bit of fun, just since it's the new new year, the asteroids that are aspected at the new moon are Hebe, H-E-B-E, -E, Isis, Hera, Hidalgo, Demeter, Lilith, Icarus, and Sisyphus. So I'm sure there's a little story there. If anyone's really into the asteroids or into mythology, look them up, see what you see as commonality, write it up and send it. Send it in for all of us. Um, another part of astrology um, is called the is the astrology of the fixed stars. So if a planet is in aspect to a fixed star at the new moon in Aries, it can give us again additional information, more further detail about the year ahead. And you know, <laughs> there astrology can be taken to the nth degree. I don't really like to do it that way because it's just it's just so much, but you could study a lifetime and never know it all. And would you want to, because when would you live your life then? The fixed stars that are aspected, Mars will, is um, a conjunct, I don't even know how to pronounce it. I've never even um, worked with it. So Allison, S-U-A-L-O-C-I-N, it means tantalizing but naive. Okay, so we're going to want to watch that. It's tantalizing. We don't want to be naive. Let's not be fooled by some bright illusions, some little shiny bobble to, of distraction. And the black moon conjunct Zubin el Genebi, which is positive social reform. Wow, yeah. So a little bit of fun astrology there. I'd like to now quickly just read the new moon Sabian symbols for the upcoming year so that you can begin to, well, you'll get a picture, you know, as I read them, you'll see kind of where the, the trajectory is. And also, if you want to write them down, or, or perhaps I can do this, make a list of them. And at the end of the month, you could write out, you know, what that energetic said to you. Which brings me to a project that I have 98% complete. My hope was to have it out and available by today, that I'm recording today, March 27th, the new moon. Um, and it is ready. I just need a proof copy printed back because this is like a hardback book I'm printing. It'll also be an ebook if you don't want to go that route. Of It's the Sabian Symbol record book. So each page is one of the Sabian symbols, all 360 degrees of, of the Sabian symbols has its own page. And so when that, when that Sabian symbol is in, is in, in effect and you have and it's in your chart, perhaps, even making an aspect. Or if that's just where the sun is that day and you want to keep a daily journal and follow the Sabian symbols by the sun and get to know them that way, that's the intention of the book. The, uh, the book also has an ephemeris for a year in the back of it so you can look up where any planet will be on any, on any day this year. And um, you can see... What Sabian, what Sabian symbol that is. I have the list of the Sabian symbols there and their number on the um, ecliptic, which we can work with later. There also are, is the probably the most valuable, well, I don't know, maybe not the most valuable, but a pretty valuable part of the book is an appendix in the back, which can, in a couple of pages of diagrams, show you how to interpret your own chart. So I've listed these planets or these signs square, these trine, these are the mutable ones. And if you have your chart, which will make be, will have a system in place to, for you to have, to get if you don't, um, that has the black moon on it, which is hard to find, and Chiron. And I'm going to show you how easy astrology really is, you, how much you can do with just a few, with a few little 
cheat sheets. <laughs> okay, so um, that's, you know, almost ready to go. Um, there t this, this year we have the first two lunar months are solar new cycles. So each month is like month-long new moons. So we have two months to set in place new intentions and goals but the most powerful ones will be are this month the first the first um of the two new solar cycles but we we have time to get you know it's not a rush i love it when we have two years of new um months because it gives us a lot of time to within that aries taurus energy to set goals which wishes and intentions that not not in the way of the secret, but the premise of working within a system that's that is proven. We've seen with the Sabian symbols of astrology how it works. So there's this are easy ways to do this. We'll get I'm going to get it out as quickly as possible. But if you want to start uh, right now, since it, today's the new moon, and start following it at eight Aries today nine Aries tomorrow, write what happens today. A woman's hat with streamers blown by the east wind. Now the new moon doesn't enter until 10.58 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and so there's there's energetic bleed over, right? So so um, there some of the today's energy is of the old year and some of it is of the new year. It doesn't fully enter until 1058. So you can just note whatever happens. Just take notes. Journal it however you want to. You could take notes of things that happen in the world that we might that we would contract later. Like, oh, there was a pattern when when Mars and Pluto did this, this happened, which we're gonna revisit. Um, but since they made that new cycle, we're we're seeing all kinds of things happen in there with that internet and the uh, control over the internet which has been the imprint with that that's unfolding um, and you can do it your way and you can learn how the Sabian symbols speak to you and what they teach you because everyone should know this because this is the matrix we're operating in it in and the more knowledge of it we have the more we can overpower it and it not have power over us I've given this a great deal of thought the impact what do the what does the knowledge of astrology do does it empower you or does it disempower you is it better to not know i'm sure i'll always <laughs> wonder about that ultimately we want to say pretty much what like what my mom now my mom who began studying astrology when she was pregnant with me she now just says uh, f the planets she's sick of it <laughs> we're rising above it right we understand that there's a matrix in place this is the code of life the sabian symbols in astrology they are the code of life of, of, of all things in their various formats we happen to have been operating under a uh, contrived um, reallocation tyrannical imperialistic triumph past triumph over that the loss now as we take back the system the say okay back to the Sabian symbols for this year the next cycle the Taurus cycle on April 26th is a woman of Samaria comes to draw water from the well the new moon in Gemini April 25th, excuse me, May 25th, a radical magazine asking for action displays a sensational front page that always gets things really stirred up. Gemini cycle. We come to the next cardinal cycle, the Cancer New Moon on June 23rd, an Arctic explorer leads a reindeer through icy canyons. It's a little bit treacherous. It tells us to tread lightly and to look ahead. We've we've worked with that energy. We know what that's about. New moon in Leo on July 23rd. Under emotional stress, blood rushes to a man's head. The basically the end of July and into August until August 21st with the Sabian symbol of an unsealed letter. During that Leo cycle, Saturn and the Black Moon will make conjunction 
the 22 Sagittarius. So we're watching those cycles, right? The Leo, um, the first Leo and then the second Leo cycle. Yeah, I'll have to go into that later. The first Leo cycle is at one Leo and then we have another new moon. It's at 30 Leo. So I'll talk more about that later on. Don't, don't get, try and get your head around that right now. Uh, Virgo cycle on September 20th, a bald headed man who has seized power. L Libra 10 on October 19th, an airplane sails high in the clear sky. Scorpio on November 18th, a military band marches noisily on through the city streets. And then we come to December, December 18th with the Sagittarius new moon conjunct the galactic center, the Gnostic Pleroma, the sculptor's vision is taking form as the Sabian symbol. The winds, the gale forced east winds are going to blow until the end of that cycle, which ends on January 15th. And so the bulk of 20, well, the remainder of 2017, yeah, we're going to have gale force winds. Things are going to shift up because it, a higher spiritual dynamic will enter on December 18th. The galactic center is going to flood us. I can't wait. What a fabulous holiday. Uh, in January 16th, we come to the Capricorn cycle at a large aviary. That's always a lot of chatter, a lot happening. A lot will be going on in January, probably because of that sculptor's vision taking form. The Aquarius cycle will be on February 15th. It's a tree felled and sawed to ensure a supply of wood for the winter. That's about preparations keep that in mind. It's about what we, it's taking what you have and using it in a different way, which is also that utilitarian, the new, the different, and the reformed. Okay, so hmm, second renaissance in, in uh, February and March. The Pisces new moon that follows on March 17th, a fertile garden under the full moon. So much is going to come out fully this year. Blow, mind-blowing things. We're prepared and we'll, we will follow the, the Sabian symbols to be aware of, of how that will transpire. And then on April 15th, 2018, we will have again the new moon, the new solar lunar year at 27 Aries through imagination, a lost opportunity is regained. It's about hope renewed and second chances. So... That's an overview. What do you think? All right, themes. Second Renaissance enters. The new, the reformed, the different. Protection, adjustment and acclimation. Balancing, a cleansing of the past. A cleansing that's happening between, a spiritual cleansing that's happening between 2015 and 2020. We're midpointing of that. Um, issues and ideas of home as in contrast to loneliness leaving things behind what is sustaining what is spiritually sustaining talents um, remembered and re-emerging releasing past burdens for reform taking things up and, and standing up for things coming out with things wisdom and truth unshadowed, a rebirth of wisdom and awareness in mass, reformation of relationships, a new relationship with the self, and the spiritual support of the sustaining unseen. Okay, thank you all. Happy New Year.